roots, a whole big thing stems a wind and a leaf to send that leaf that protect the worm. So if this is the Hashkocha Pratis, if this is the divine province over a worm, I ask you, what is the divine province over a Jewish family? What is the divine province of a Jewish mother? When she goes into the hospital to have a Jewish baby, that there's no bigger simcha in the world today, after the Holocaust. And this the Carlina Rebbe told me. He heard it from the Rachman Stripster Rebbe that blessed him when he had his tenth child. He said there is no bigger simcha in Shemayim than when a Jewish child is born to a Torah observant home. Barishan has a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so you have a Jewish mother that's raising a child. If all the mothers knew the love and the divine providence that Hashem has on them, on every little word they tell the kids, on every little thing, they, they, they couldn't get nothing done because they'd be jumping for joy. They'd be dancing all day long. All day long they'd be dancing. A Jewish man, when you go to work, and you're doing your work, and you're really not thinking about your work, you're doing your work because you're thinking about your Torah lesson, your Chavrusa, then you're coming back after the work, you got Mincha, and you got an hour and a half Chavrusa, learning Gemara, and then Mairif. can't believe that here's the guy working as an accountant in New Jersey, and he's plugging away all day long, and his whole aspiration is to get to evening in the basement or to learn something. It's unbelievable. That you got guys burned in coil all day long. And Bani Shalom doesn't have the satisfaction he has of this guy who's keeping himself. And a about Shuvah, you can't begin to imagine. Can't begin to imagine a about Shuvah. What happens in a about Shuvah? How does the king feel when he has a son that has been captive for 20, 25, 30 years and then the son comes home to the castle? It's festivals every day in the castle. I mean, the king, this is, makes happy, the king happy. So, I want to get off track. But if we can imagine the divine providence, the Hashkoha providence, on a worm, or on a dry leaf, imagine for a moment, begin to imagine, the divine providence on a Jew, the divine providence on a Torah observant Jew, the divine providence on a Balchuvah, now why do you think that Chazal and the Gemara and Sanhedrin said, "Bimokon shebalei tshuva oimdim ein tzadikim gmulim oimdim"? That in a place where balei tshuva stand, perfect tzadikim. You know what perfect tzadik is? Perfect tzadik is the Babatanya, the Noam Eli Melech, the Nachman of Blessed. This this is what perfect tzadikim. You know, what? You talk about people in this room that the Noam Ali Melech would say Shalom Aleichem Rebbe. People don't believe it. But that's the problem. If the Chazal said it, it is true. Believe it. And now you can imagine why. You can imagine why. Because of what we're talking about. So if we said the divine providence on a worm, Toiv Hashem Lakal, Hashem does what's good for everyone, you can better believe that Hashem does what's good for everyone in this room. So let's review the three principles and tie them all together. Number one, Hashem rules the world. Number two, Hashem is merciful and compassionate. Number three, Hashem does what's good for everyone. So if something happens to me, seemingly bad, okay, before I get stressed out, before I worry, let me run down my checklist. Like a pilot, before he's taken off, he runs down his checklist. Right, rudder? Left rudder, stabilizers. Okay. I run down my checklist. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. Ay, 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 ay. Wow, wow, wow. It's surprises, surprises. So we run down the checklist. I said, wait a second. Hashem runs the world. Nothing can happen without getting the king's signature. The king sanctions what's happening to me right now. And Hashem is merciful. 
Okay. So by this happening to me, this is Hashem is merciful. And Hashem is doing what's best. Personally, Hashem brought this. My own private divine providence. Hashem's Hashem brought this on me. Divine providence. It's the best for me. And as soon as you run down that checklist, there's no more worry. Because you hear, your stocks went down. You lost some money. Okay, you lost some money. Let's, let's put it to practice, okay? Somebody lost some money. Even worse, had last week. I got a guy who writes me from the States, frantic completely, and he starts, Sir Blazer, you gotta give me your phone number, I gotta call you, this and that, I've just been fired from my job. I got four kids, I got a mortgage in the house, the whole deal. Everybody appreciate it. Now that, that's a big red light. That's a flashing red light. I get an email like that, the drop everything, okay, you gotta, gotta bail this guy out. So, I told him, tell me about the job. Told me about the job, guys in high tech, very competitive, this and that, and he's kind of plateaued out, and he was all worried, he got fired. Let me tell you something, I'll make the story short. 48 hours after he got fired, he got a job with another 8,000 bucks more a year and a better, a lot better future, and he couldn't even dream of it. Couldn't even dream of it. So at the time he got the ax, he said, Hashem could be so cruel. No, no, no. Hashem is setting him up for something better. Now the fact that we don't see what Hashem is doing, that doesn't mean anything else. We don't have the entire computer printout. Okay, when a little soldier is fighting down the battle, he says, what's the general sent me to the right? I see the enemy to the left. No, but you're down on the field. The general is way up on the hill, and the general has satellites, and he's got all kinds of observers all over the place, and he's making decisions. He sees the whole thing. You don't see, you don't see anything. You're inside your little tank. You have your job to do. Your job to do. So we're the soldiers doing our jobs down here, and Hashem, he sees the whole picture. We don't have the picture. We don't know. And I took a lot of flack. A lot of flack for it. With, with Gush Katif. You saw Gush Katif and Gush Katif and Gush Katif. It's all for the best. It's all for the best. I had one Kabbalist tell me. One Kabbalist, and he, he showed me a book. I had a book where the after Rav says that when people of Eretz Yisrael get kicked out of border villages in Eretz Yisrael, that is the start of the Gula. Oh, Amen. We're waiting for it. But even though we don't know, let's say it's not. Let's say it's not even. If, if, if we that deal, we're, we're all already fast on the fast track to full redemption of our people. Amen. Oh, Amen. Can you have some? And I think it's only a matter, I, I believe, in minutes. You know, every minute. And if it's Monte Shabbos, okay, guys, everybody, let's leave Passaic and we're getting on the, back on the jet and we're going back there at Yisro. Because Mashiach is here. But it's all for the best. And even so we see things we don't understand. The world is going completely crazy. Here you've got one of the biggest tzaddikim in Israel, Rav Kaduri, that Hashem should give him a full uh, Yitzchak ben Oh Amen. And, and he's lying in a coma. And then we have uh, Amrik, the half deal, Elif of the boat, and he's lying in a coma. A person really has to have an ear, nose, and throat specialist if you can't smell the gula. Because and everything's coming down. It's all for the best. And the fact that we don't understand, it still means that we have to begin. And people said to me, the Ger Rebbe's son, and I heard mention the Ger Rebbe's dad last Seder Pesach, that he feels that Mashiach is going to come this year, and if not this year, the next year. And the next year, this is uh, 5766. And people having a big field day, ha ha ha, Mashiach didn't come. Doesn't matter. That takes away from what the Gare Rebbe said. I'm sure that the Gare Rebbe smelled, with, with, and, 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 and he smelled Mashiach, he felt Mashiach. He felt Mashiach. He's not lying to anybody, the Gare Rebbe. And everything that the Gare Rebbe said, it's just if it came true. Okay, so maybe we haven't deserved it. But Mashiach is sure is coming. That does not affect our belief every every single day, every single minute to wait for Mashiach. Hashem is doing what's absolutely best for all of us. Even though we don't understand, that doesn't alter. So even anything that happens to us, anything, Hashem runs the world. And Hashem is merciful. And Hashem is doing what's best for us. 
Okay, now I invite anybody, we're going to have least time for questions also. Uh, I don't know how long I've been speaking, I have no idea. Okay, we're going we're to leave time for questions, and so I'm going to maybe speak another 10, 15 minutes, and then we're going to have questions. But I invite now anybody to yell out and tell me that in light of these three principles, and don't be embarrassed, 